Ellie and I were talking, my, my wife and I were talking about the feeling that's going on right now. There's optimism. And this goes back to what 17 was saying about the sub summer of love. Summer of love was in 1967. I was, I was living in New York. I wasn't living too far away from Woodstock, but I was only six years old in 67 during the summer of love. But I remember my, I had my cellular memory remembers that feeling. I didn't understand make love, not war, but I felt it. I felt what they were feeling. We lived just right down the street from a state college, uh, a state university of New York, of, uh, of New York college. And at the time, you know, even at six, seven years old, I could, I could go to the college with my sisters, my older sisters and hang out there. You know, it was a much simpler time back in the sixties. I remember seeing college students out there, um, you know, they had this one area on the lawn. It was like a, uh, it's a, a small hill that led to the, this one place where uh, a dining hall and people would gather there and I'd see musicians there playing guitar and stuff and people just having a great time there. And of course there was various aromas in the air. If you know what I mean, too young to understand that as well, but I felt the energy of that and anyone anyone that was around in the 60s and 67 that was old enough to feel and remember that energy it was memorable and like i said that that energy was locked into my cellular memory even though i don't didn't understand the meaning of it then i do now there's an optimism in the air that we haven't felt in a long time. I got to tell you guys, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. In the past, <laughs> I'll admit it. I voted for Clinton, Bill Clinton and Hillary. I voted for Bill. I voted, I voted for Hillary when I was living in New York, thinking that she's going to, she's going to have to show progress of doing something for New York. And I figured, okay, because she's going to want to run for president eventually. She's going to have to show that she did something. She didn't do diddly for New York. What a waste of a vote. Conversely, I was a huge Ron Paul fan. On my coolers, I, I have Ron Paul Revolution on my cool, coolers. To this day, those stickers are still on there. Love Ron Paul. I voted for, what was that one short guy? Perot, Ross Perot. <laughs> I voted for him. I don't care. All I want is the truth. All I want is honesty. All I want is transparency. So in 2016, when uh, Trump was running against Hillary, I went to bed not knowing who won. But when I woke up, something changed. You could tangibly feel the energy it had changed. It became lighter, right? It was almost as if you're like this, uh, and then all of a sudden, oh, you know, all of a sudden there's optimism and you, it was a, a new energy had came in when Trump was elected president. A lot of people felt that. Guess what happened recently? Is this what 17 was talking about, about the the summer of love, redo, redux, that energy that was in my cellular memory from that, the energy that was from when Trump was elected in 2016, the energy recently with everything that's going on with the, the guide stones getting knocked down and destroyed with Boris getting out of office, something's changed. The energy is coming around. It makes you wonder, like about Ghislaine Maxwell. Like I said, this is all pure speculation and for entertainment purposes only. But with Ghislaine Maxwell, why does she only get 20 years sentence, right? That seems unusually low for somebody unless she was singing like a canary. 
which 17 talked about as well. Why did Boris resign? Did it have something to do with someone singing like a canary? This stuff is all coming to fruition. Remember, we're in Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, right on, right on schedule. We saw the banking collapse. We saw the housing bubble, you know, and Pluto's known as the destroyer. You know, it's going to tear down everything that's not in humanity's best interests. Pluto stays in Capricorn until 2023, until the end of next year. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn was during both the French and American revolutions. What's been going on all around the world since 2008? Revolutions, right? There's one going on in the Netherlands right now that they're not talking about. Same thing in Italy. We're hearing of, uh, of revolutions going on there. That energy's in the air. Pluto and Capricorn. What happens is it, the truth vibration is out there right now with Pluto and Capricorn. And as we continue to move on toward the end of 2023, that light shining on the dark continues to get brighter and brighter and exposing more of the dark. It's an exciting time to be alive right now. So there's, there's that air of optimism going on. Are you guys feeling that? Do you feel a change? Something shifted? I do. going to wrap it up there check out in 5d quantum tie-dye for awesome shirts like this we got buy three and get one free the code is right down here uh, love in 5d at in 5d.net and uh definitely uh check us out Allie and me out on tuesday nights we have our uh, weekly global predictions on uh, our, our in 5d youtube channel followed by date night where we talk about anything and everything Everybody's welcome for that. It's a lot of fun, a lot of interaction with everybody in the chat. And uh, before I leave, if nobody told you this yet today, please allow me to be the first. You are loved. You are appreciated. Thank you for your service to humanity. I'm going to leave it off there. Until the next time, I'm Greg Prescott from in5d.com and in5d.net. Sending you all infinite love and light. Namaste, everyone.